Welcome back to The Zero Podcast, where we talk about lifting, coaching, and more. You can learn more about Zero by going to www.zero.com.au. That's Zero with a W. We are also proudly sponsored by Establishment Coffee. Head to establishmentcoffee.com.au. Use the code ZERO25 for 25% off and free shipping. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. That's what all the cool kids say. And if you're on Spotify, hit that five-star review. We love it. Enjoy the show now. All right, guys. What are you grateful for today? <laughs> Meg oh, Dog. Hello. How are you? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I forgot how to podcast. Straight to business. <laughs> how is everybody? Good. How are you? Great. Good. Fine, thanks. <laughs> you got some jet lag, Tom, bro? Are you good? Oh, all right. Yeah. I will tomorrow. How long were you in Sydney for? To yesterday? Yeah. Oh, just a couple of hours. So when Meg said you were coming to train, did you end up training? Yeah. I was like, what the fuck? Straight off the plane. Yeah. It, it helps settle in. Really? And also helps like spread the day out. Yeah, okay. If you just go home when you're tired, you just want to sleep. Mm -hmm. so it's good to stay moving. Ah, fair enough. Keep moving at all times. How are you, Bridget? You good? I'm great. I'm fantastic. That's good. Are we... Are we doing gratefuls? Are we talking about what we've been up to? Why have to? we all forgotten <laughs> I don't know. how to do this? It's I only been one week. <laughs> all real awkward, eh? <laughs> all right, let's do gratefuls then. All right. Tom, bro, what are you grateful for? I'm grateful for my mother. Aww. Grateful for mum. Without mum, uh, well, mum helps me out with travel a lot. Uh, so it makes makes doing things like what I did this past weekend possible. So grateful for mum. Nice. That's a really good one. You, yeah. you probably wouldn't be able to do as much as you do, eh? Or you would, but it would be a fucking... I, I wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would. I'd just be broke. I just wouldn't have gyms. Ironic, because gyms make you broke. <laughs> Meg, what are you grateful for? I'm grateful for my friends, because uh, they're a great sounding board for me. And oftentimes in conversation, I just have moments where I realize that we're all very much similar in terms of our values and what we want. And it's good to surround yourself with people like that. So yes. I'm very grateful for my friends. Nice. Amazing. Good. Mm -hmm. uh, I am just grateful for my job here at Zero. I've just had a really great couple of weeks at work and I'm loving coming in here every day. And How ironic. Tom Burrell's away. <laughs> 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 you weren't gone for two weeks. Yeah. A bit, <laughs> bit you wish I was. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, we're, we're grateful for you too, Bridget. Thank you. Um, I am grateful for the cooler weather. Mm. Yeah, mm, how nice is it? So much better. It's been like half a day, but it makes such a huge difference. First mm. night mm. in months that I didn't run my aircon all night. Yeah, last night. Very good. Yeah, I won't be changing that anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> nice. uh, all um, right, who's got some quotes? Who wants to kick us off? I have a quote. Let me pull it up. Yes, it is. Me you too. know that guy, <laughs> Kerwin Ray. Ah, yes, yeah. Kr. Kr. If you want to <laughs> pull a crap. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Mick. If, if you want to perform at the highest level, surround yourself with people who expect more from you. Ooh, nice. I like nice. that. Mm. Boom, boom. What a gem. Mm. Mine is success usually comes to those who are too busy to be looking for it. <laughs> Stay busy. Never, never let them know your next move. <laughs> Tom Brass. Mine's real cliche today. Go nice. on. Fall seven times, get up eight. Love Ooh it. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nice. See Chase's face. Oh. It doesn't really make sense anyway. If you fall seven times, you get up seven times. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but wow, I got up eight. <laughs> To get up, you have to get back down. So, so. <laughs> but you know, you know what I'm saying. Mm. Pick keep, yourself back up. Keep trying. Keep yeah. trying. Keep, keep going. Um, you will face many defeats in life, but never let yourself be defeated. Yeah. Nice. Mm. Stoic said that. Yeah. <laughs> Mar Marcus Aurelius. <laughs> Aurelius. <laughs> Sirius. Uh. Isn't he the really horrible guy in Wha Joaquin Phoenix? Is that who plays Aurelius? That's not Marcus Aurelius. Who's that? Is it? What's that movie? Yeah. In um, Gladiator. Maybe that's Gladiator. Oh, that's, wait. Yeah, well, it would make sense. Oh, yeah. Is He's it? the that guy, right? Yeah? So, I wait. Is that Marcus Aurelius? Why would you constantly quote him? Isn't yeah. he like the worst dude? Wow, you've just literally just fucking 
Uh, yeah, but oh, it is. It is Marcus Aurelius. Oh. Isn't he go. the worst? How do you know that? You don't even know the movie Gladiator. We watched it together. <laughs> yeah, but how do you? <laughs> yeah, but Wait. we watched it because you didn't know it. So how Wait. do you remember that? But then how did you? It. How did you not pick up that's Marcus Aurelius? I I, I don't know. His brain just didn't connect it, but I just did because I'm like, wow. Always, always but so I only just thought, yeah, that's fucked. Yeah, well, yeah. that guy's a dog. <laughs> yeah, he is a dog. Good quotes though. <laughs> it was just culture back then. It's okay. Oh, yeah. Maybe he's just a good businessman. He can't a- a- apply your cultural understanding to them. Mm. He was pure evil. In the movie he was. Mm. Yeah. Maybe he was acting for the movie. Maybe. Just I played can't himself. remember how bad he was. I only saw it once. What was I going to say? We did Great Falls. Oh, yeah. What we've been up to. Yeah, what have we learnt slash been up to this week? What have we learnt? Well, I'll go last because mine will be the longest. <laughs> uh, I've been being a single dog mom, just hanging it, hanging out with the boys while Thomas has been away in the US. That's good you're not playing the victim. <laughs> <laughs> hey, since when is a single mom a victim? I didn't say that. Yeah, mm. you said that. Yeah, Tombo. Yeah. I'm really putting my foot in my mouth <laughs> this podcast. <laughs> CJ's got his work cut out for him, eh? Yeah. The podcast no. ended up going for five minutes. No, the whole thing's been edited. Just joking around. But yeah, no, we've just been hanging out, had a normal week. That's all. Nice. And celebrated Buddy's birthday. Yeah. 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 Big 12 year old. 12 year old boy. My I'm boy. Mr. Very yeah. handsome man. See that? I'm a bad father. Tra- traveling the world while my son is growing up. No, he <laughs> understands. Missing, missing him growing up. Well, he's one of the owners of the business, so he... That's mm. true. Yeah, he knows. It's true. <laughs> mm. He's on that hustle. Yeah. Uh, Bridget, what have you been up to? Uh, what have I been up to? Lots of different stuff. I'm deloading this week. Did a cheeky single, though, at 100. Sorry, Thomas. But it was pretty easy, so mm. that felt good. It was. It was easy. Yeah. Uh, what else? Oh, James and I went to a rodeo the other weekend. That was a lot of fun. Oh, did we not yeah. say that? No, oh, we, we didn't have a podcast we didn't do it last, week. last week. I bailed. Yeah, yeah I took yeah. James to his first rodeo. Mm. And we got, we so got now we're going to PBR in June. Yeah, what's, we're going to a that? proper PBR. Uh, professional bull riding oh. at yeah. the Entertainment Centre. It's like a state of origin one. It's Queensland versus New South oh, Wales. Oh, sick. Yeah, yeah. Actually, when is it? Uh, June 8th, I think. It's the same week of origin, but it's that weekend. Yeah, nice. Mm. What kind of people does it attract? Country people. Yeah, rednecks. Rednecks, yeah. Mm. Have you guys seen Cool Runnings? Yeah. Yes. Heaps of times. You know when Sanka... Like they go and then he gets right into line dancing and mm. like wearing yeah. a hat and stuff. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's how I see James. Bro, James no, like, that's that's what he's turning into. Have yeah. you ordered your Akubra yet? <laughs> no, I, I've been. I want some cowboy boots though. Yeah, yeah. Bring his westerns <laughs> just down the road. Yeah, nah, too expensive. <laughs> yeah, they're like four, five hundred dollars. I, I want a pair that I'm because I'm going to wear them once a year, kind of thing. <laughs> see if it, if we there's a place in Nashville which is like uh, buy one get two free. Oh really? Of of cowboy boots. You know, like Benny and Isabel brought them mm. back and mm-hmm. Daniel and I took photos in the store, but we didn't actually buy anything. <laughs> if I see any over there in the places that we go in a month or two, I'll hook right. you up. <laughs> yeah, that <was> <laughs> um, yeah, but that's a, f- that's an, um, those guys are next level. They're next level. Like athletic. Yep, yeah. Everything. Just powerhouses. Yeah, my cousin was a junior champion bull rider. Mm. Shout out Justin. I don't think he listens to this, <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> yeah, but so we've been going down the rabbit hole of watching like pro bull riding. Mm. And um, yeah, those guys are just like, they got a UFC fighter. They got Donald Cerrone, who's a freak athlete. He's, has he got the most wins in UFC history? Yeah, so he's Is a he freak athlete. Is he the one that's going to ride Dana White's bull? Yeah, Dana White owns a bull called Twisted Steel. And no, has anyone read it for eight seconds? I'm not too sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, we watched mm. the video. Someone did. Yeah, but um, so he's going to ride it. And just watching him try train, for it, it's he's got no hope. I hope one day I'm rich enough so I can just buy a champion bull. <laughs> <laughs> just be like, that's the bull. Yeah. You, you don't mess with Twisted yeah. Steel. <laughs> it's a cool name as well, like <laughs> Twisted Steel. And he looks terrifying. Yeah, he looks well. scary. Mm. They are in general. They're so huge. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, it was so fascinating to me because I've never been to a sport like that. Mm. I don't like not a lot of people have. And it was just a whole different culture and yeah, it was really cool. Yeah, nice. Um yeah. Good fun. Um, what have you been up to? Rolling. Mm. Oh, yes. I did a jiu-jitsu comp in the weekend. How'd you go? Two from three. Nice. Should have been three from three. What oh, happened on right. the one you lost? Um, he Sorry, beat me the one you didn't win. Uh, he beat me by an advantage. So he actually didn't beat me. What was the advantage? Uh, it was. We no don't one. really know. Yeah. We tried to find out. But I don't know. There was some 
There was a lot of people complaining about the refing that day. But oh, so did know. you time out so that wasn't a clear... No, nah, so we, the score was two all. I actually scored the first takedown. So I was in the dominant position to begin with. Mm-hmm. And then he eventually took me down and then he scored an advantage for something. And what kind of things do you have to do to get an advantage? I, st- I still don't know. It's one of those really obscure rules. Like, you know how there's some obscure rules in powerlifting that no sure. one really understands? Yeah. It's one of those things to an extent. Oh. Um. But yeah, then I versed him again in the absolute division and I beat him. him. Yeah, with five seconds to go. This is how I see Mm. it. If you had to beat him the first time, then you would have had two more rolls and then you would have been too tired by the Mm. time absolute came around and you might have lost. Yeah, but I was just spewing that he beat me and then he had the easiest run to the finals. Mm. And he, uh, so yeah. Did he win the finals? Yeah. Yeah, didn't he like smoke Mm. the other two? Yeah, so. Oh, you're saying in the, because this is gi and no gi. Yeah, so the the way the bracket worked out, me and him faced each other and everyone else had a bye and they went straight to the semis. Okay. So me and him versed each other and it was like, without like saying like a wanker, we're we're, we're the both the best in the division. Yeah. And then so he won the semi-final like 22 nil and then he won the final like 20 nil and then me and him were two all and then I versed him in the absolute division and beat him. Yeah. And he was six kilos heavier than me. Mm. Yeah. So it was pretty cool. It was weird. You guys were like a similar build, like a similar height. Mm. You fought the same. You were both really strong. And um, yeah, so the second time, uh, oh, sorry, sorry. So my first gi match, I won like 14 nil. Mm. It was a, uh, it was a, uh, do I say, I don't want to sound like an idiot, but it was like a really like just dominant performance. Yeah. Um, well, it was. Mm. And then I lost to him, versed him again in absolute. And then this time, all, I knew my game plan needed to be different. I was like, I didn't put enough pressure on early because I feel like in jiu-jitsu, I got quite good cardio just from, I guess, running and whatnot. Mm. So I just put the pressure on right from the start and kept moving forward, kept moving forward. And he didn't want a bar every day. He was so tired. And I was just real heavy on his neck and head, just constantly pulling him down. And yeah, he hated it. So uh, then I just gassed him out. I'll admit, I don't understand any mm. of that. But I just realised <laughs> when I said all yeah, that. Yeah, I have I a lot like, of yeah. questions, but it's just going to drag on forever. Yeah. If I ask <laughs> Did you hit him with the omoplata I taught you? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> but I, um, I've done the same takedown, like counter, <laughs> counter, counter takedown uh, three times now in competition and it's worked every time. Yeah. Do mm. you talk smack during? Like you're like, I'll No, you're not allowed to. I got, I get, oh. I'm. I can't help it. You could probably already tell. I get really like aggressive and really hyped up. What? And uh, no. you got fired up too. You? Early. Yeah. <laughs> so I can't help. But uh, yeah, when I when I scored the takedown because I saw there was five seconds to go and I was in side control on top and I was just like, "Fuck yeah!" And you get do- disqualified for celebrating <laughs> like on the mat. And oh. then like my whole team, I looked up and all my team were like, "Stop! Stop! Stop!" And I was like, and I just stopped. <laughs> And then, yeah. So you can't oh even gosh. like whisper them being like, how you like that? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so I just, I was like, uh, yeah, I was just way too hyped up and I was just fucking, but yeah, one, I didn't like versing him because he was like the same build as me, short, stocky, and it was very difficult. Mm. Mm, so I don't want to do that again. Mm. Mm. But yeah, had a good weekend. Two from three. The goal was three from three, but that's all good. Uh, man, it's nice. be- better than going in and just having a bunch of easy wins. Mm. Mm. Oh yeah. 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 That's cool, man. Well done. Thanks, and bro. you're one up from last year, so you'll be three for three next year. Yeah. Mm. Hopefully. We'll see. Mm-hmm. Sick. Mm. Meg, what have you been up to? Uh, well, on top of the other stuff, I watched Theo Vaughn on the weekend. Oh! oh yeah. So good. Oh, How you went was first, it? Sorry. Yeah, I did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he, he was hilarious. And I knew that there were opening apps, acts, but I was kind of dreading them just because I've been to so many comedy shows and been like, eh. Um, but... Dusty Rich, who was like one of my favouritest comedians, opened. Mm. Is he the Australian guy who like swears a lot? He swears. He's South African. South African. No, that's right. I've yeah. seen him down at um, Nobby's Art. Yeah, I've seen yeah, him down there too. Yeah, he's so funny. He's so funny. Yeah. And he <laughs> just like really, really um, handled the crowd because it was a big crowd. Yeah. And I was just proud of him because he just performs at like local places. Yeah. Mm. That's yeah. cool that he got to open for Theo Von there. Yeah. That's awesome. So cool. He's really funny. He is funny. Yeah. Mm. Um, and so yeah, that was that was fun, good fun. Theo Von's so good, eh? Yeah, he's so smart though, eh? Have he, you listened yeah. to his podcast? Yeah, yeah, he's such a good podcast. That's though. how I got into him. But he he, you know how he gets kind of deep sometimes, yeah. and he didn't really do that. He just told anecdotes or some prepared jokes the whole time, mm-hmm. and didn't really show his podca- podcast persona. Yeah, but I liked it. That's awesome. Nice. Yeah, hmm. really good. Sweet. Well, as you know, I went to America. Uh, Lily Riley lifted in the animal cage over there, which is um, for those of who of you who are newer to powerlifting, it was like always one of the highlight events of the year in the powerlifting world. It's just the brand animal uh, has a, has a or has historically had a big presence in the strength world, 
and they would put on this cage at the Arnold Sports Festival and uh, just showcase some big freaky heavy lifts. <coughs> so it's a lot of lifters' dream to either go watch the cage or lift in the cage, and not a lot of people get to do it. Uh, I had the privilege of going there back in 2017, and it was way better this year. Yeah, nice. Like a combination of just like it felt bigger and better. But I also think when I went there – Back in the day, I felt very much an accessory. You know, it was just, I, I tried to fade in and not be really amongst it. Whereas this time I tried to get amongst it, whether that's just like more self-confidence in myself or in the brand or in the coaching or, uh, but it was actually fun, like really fun. I don't remember last time thinking this is a really fun time. I think I was too much of a spectator and not, you know, a participator. So, uh, and it wasn't about me at all. It was all about Lily. Uh, and she did so 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 good, so it was it was great. That's cool because you know if um <coughs> you know if you're invited to the animal cage, you're like one of the best in the world, and you know it's like a it's one of those things that's like there are already eyes on you, so yeah. they want people who already have eyes on them, which is cool. It was really cool because she ended up being pretty much the favorite of that day of the Friday, uh, and I think she was one of the favorites of the whole weekend. She had a ridiculous crowd. And then when we were walking around everywhere, people were stopping her, getting autographs and photos and stuff like that. That's cool. So people really loved her. And I've got a th few theories as to why she may have stood out a bit more than, than other people. But I think one of the things is that, like, you you imagine you're just watching someone train and, like, not being amongst it. So, like, someone just comes here and does a session. It's kind of weird to just watch someone sit in the corner with their headphones on. And a lot of the lifters are just like that. They're just sitting by themselves, like, in the zone a bit, like, you know, when we watch people at comps, you're like, it's all right, bro, you can come mm. down. Like, we appreciate the show a little bit, but in between sets, just watching someone sit there isn't that inviting, whereas we were, like, so excited to be in there, and so we were just, like, laughing and joking and hanging out and uh, getting amongst, like, the spotters and loaders and chatting to them, and I think we just looked a little bit more real. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then Lily was doing stuff like singing the songs when she was getting under the bar and all that sort of stuff. People just loved it. Yeah, she. Um, I only met her for the first time when we did the podcast, but she just seems like a lovable person. She's yeah, she's so a real sweet. sweetheart. I went over to shake her hand. She just stood up and gave me a hug, and yeah, she's so nice. Yeah, really yeah, yeah. lovely. Uh, but I mean, the the whole Arnold experience. I hate crowds and I hate expos in gen general. I I kind of dread them. Uh, but this year was was kind of cool. I was about to say that to you. I was like, you actually look like you really enjoyed it. Yeah, I I, I definitely struggled at times, but uh, like I don't know. It was just I don't know why it felt so special this year. It just did. I could tell as well, just from the Instagram stories and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, no, normally, I wouldn't bother getting photos with people because I don't care that much. There's a few people that I always get a bit starstruck by. Like I've seen in Dan Green a lot of times. I've had dinner with him a lot of times and hung out, been to his gym, and uh, I'm still very starstruck by Dan Green. So like a funny story, we, we were getting on the – I was getting on the plane in uh, San Francisco. So I went to San Fran, stayed the night, then flew San Fran to Columbus. And his, gr his gym is in San Francisco. So I went and trained there and hung out with some friends that I have there. Uh, and then they're like, oh, I think Dan's on the same flight as you. I'm like, oh, that's, that's cool. So I was sitting there and um, I, I walked, I got onto the plane. There was this old woman sort of standing in the aisle next to me, uh, standing up, looking motherly. Uh, and then I saw his wife come on and walk past. I'm like, cool, Dan Green is on this plane. And she went down to the back of the plane. And then I saw Dan do the same. I'm like, that's super cool. Dan's on my plane. But they were just putting their bags back there and then they came back up and they sat next to me like in the same in the same cool. row. And the old woman is Dan Green's like one of his first ever clients. Like before oh. before he was Dan Green. And she's actually the mother of the re reality TV stars from a really big show over there. I've never heard of it. It's called Selling Sunset. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Heard of that? It's the yeah. real estate one. Yeah. So yeah. she's the mum of those two guys. Yeah. Wow. So we just spoke the whole flight um, and... That was really cool. And then we all hung out the whole weekend. Uh, so it was, it was pretty cool, like, hanging out with an idol. Uh, and like I said, I've done it before, but I still get very starstruck. Mm. Yeah, like, it, in my head, I'm like, be normal. And the more you try to be normal, the more you're not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you're like, no, you're like, just say this. You're like, don't say that. You sound <laughs> stupid. And then before you know <laughs> it, you're just sort of it. sitting there being like, <laughs> you know, not knowing what to say because you're so in your head about what you should or shouldn't yeah. say. So you just sit there in silence. That's so cool. Like, um, I, f I feel like for uh, people our age, especially, animal, like, has got, like, a huge impact on us. And, you know, time. we all wanted the animal T-shirt with, like, the background of, like, who was on – did your one have anyone on it? Your no, I, I've only got one, which is up there. I mean, oh, it's universal. But yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, true. Yeah. No, like everyone wanted an animal tea when you started training. And yeah. Everyone probably got the animal supplements. You know, remember the supplements? Yeah, that the, animal pack. Yeah. 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 You're like 20 tablets in a little pack. Yeah. I spoke to the guy that's been working there for 20 years who formulated it. Oh, wow. Yeah. He was super cool. I got to hang out with, hang out with him quite a bit. But yeah, I, I never really get starstruck or care about who's there. And like, to be honest, because I'm so, it's so weird that my whole career is in the fitness industry, but I know nothing about it. Mm -hmm. So, so many of the booths that had like hour long lineups to see people I'd never heard of. There's some chick Do you remember like some of their names? Big Beef Patty or Lean Beef Patty or something like that. Uh, she had a gigantic lineup. She's got like millions of followers. Sam yeah. Sulik was there. That was cool. Yeah, I really wow. liked. I really liked Sam. That's Sulik. cool. And He's you got to man. meet um, Hunter Henderson as well, didn't you? Yeah, she's Hunter, one of my favorites. Hunter Henderson. She was lovely. Yeah. Uh, but then, like, I walked into my hotel, and the first person I see uh, walking in is. Uh, Dexter Jackson, he's outside Ooh. on the phone. I walk into the lobby, there's Jay Cutler just hanging out. I'm like, where am I? <laughs> it's so weird. Then you're walking around the expo, I'm like, that's Ray Williams. Uh, or that's, um, you know, Dennis Wolf from Bodybuilder. Bro, from I, when I, I, could, I couldn't stop staring at that photo. I was like, why does he look so familiar? Yeah. Wow. Well, well, lots of people don't know who he is. Yeah. Because he's kind of like one of these guys that was, I always feel sorry for these bodybuilders. They're, you know, top 10, but, never win anything huge mm. and so people that like bodybuilding know them and but they're always like a little mm. behind in the pack uh and i always loved dennis wolf's physique i was a fan of dennis wolf as well he had he, that big he always, wide back yeah he always mm. just seemed like a cool guy in his videos too and he was a really cool guy in real life he looks really healthy now too yeah how old is he i don't know he'd be in his 50s i'd say yeah maybe even no i'm not older than that he was like big in the early 2000s i was gonna say he was still competing pro like yeah, 10 years ago. Late 90s, early 2000s was his like heyday. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I met Goob. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. <laughs> it, he was cool. We've spoken online a, a bit, so he knew who I was and it was cool to you know, put a face to the name kind of thing and do his silly Wuhan challenge, mm. that silly bench press. That was, that was cool, the street lifting challenge. Yeah, but I mean, it's hard going in 140 cold. Did you do that cold? Yeah. So you have to do like a little hip thrust first. Yeah, and I did, I'd never done it. So you have to learn how to do the movement. I lie. I did three reps of one, uh, two plates to warm up. Yeah. But that's it. Um, yeah, so that was cool. And then like Sebastian there was Thor, was, was there with Thor. Um, Sarah Rodwell, who used to train with Zero, she was there doing some comps. That was really cool. What was she doing? Arm wrestling or? Yeah. Arm wrestling. No, no, no. Sorry. Strong she, she doesn't do arm wrestling anymore. She's doing a grip comp. Oh, cool. So it's like a bunch of different implements. Um, it's really funny. Have I ever told you how when I go places with Daniel, for some reason I always get recognized. Mm. And so like Daniel's like, oh, what the fuck? Like we went to Worlds and we're talking to the president and some guy comes over and he's like, are you Thomas Lilly? And like wants a photo and stuff. It, it just happens wherever we go. Mm. Uh, we were sitting in the cage and Ed Cohen walked in the cage and he saw me and his face lit up and I'm the, he made a beeline to me to like give me a hug and stuff. Like yeah, I'm finally getting some, <laughs> finally getting some clout around here. <laughs> Lily's walking away, getting all the glory. Now it's my turn. <laughs> and then same thing happened. Like half an hour later, Broderick walked in the the cage, and I was the first person he came over and said hi to. So <laughs> made me because most people over there they have no idea about zero and who mm. I am and what we do and all that sort of stuff. So just a, a bit of a nobody. Uh, so it's cool to get some nice. get, get some spec around here. <laughs> that's crazy. Well, that's what because uh, she told me about the um, Ed Cohen thing. I was yeah. like, that's so cool. And then I thought about it. I was like, that's kind of crazy. Like in the powerlifting scene in Australia, like you're very, zero itself is very well recognized. Yeah. And I was just thinking, I was like, fuck, like, yeah, it would be weird going over there and like, you know, you're well known to some people, but yeah, it's just a, you know, you kind of uh, not fucking get, I don't, I don't know. I know what you're saying. Yeah. The, but, but shout out. I'm really sorry. I forgot. I'm forgetting your name. Just having a mind blank. Cause I haven't slept for like four days. Uh, but a lovely gentleman came up and knew all of us because he listens in, to the podcast and watches it and he got a photo with me. So thank you for listening, wow. brother. That was cool. cool. International clout. I like that. So was he American? Uh, I think he was from Canada. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, but that, that was cool that he, uh, you know, came over and Definitely. said hello and, and oh, hung wow. out. Uh, but yeah, it was it was a cool experience. It was better than I was expecting. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, and Lily had a great time. Uh, and now that we've got some some rep over there, the plan next year would be to to take a little zero team and have like Lily go and do her thing again, and then maybe take Colton and do four hundred for reps on a deadlift, and then 
get Theo to like break the all-time deadlift record. That would be super cool. Yeah, Bro, wow. you could you could bring the gnarliest team over mm-hmm. there, right? Yeah. Just a yep. bunch of freaks. It'd be mm-hmm. sick. That would be like, what the fuck? Imagine that. You rock up with Kurt Keo, Colton. Yeah, Theo, Jen. Yeah, uh, I'm not unreal. taking everyone. <laughs> no, but I'm just trying to think of everyone that like, do you know what I mean? There's so many freaks. Well, yeah, there's, yeah. A, there's a lot of talent that goes unrecognized because of you mm. know, America's America. Yeah. It's big. Yeah, wow, that's sick. Any other highlights? Um, I mean, there's plenty, but I don't want to don't want to steal the show too much. No, I want, bro. I want to. Yeah, this, cool. this is why I didn't ask you about it this morning because I actually want to hear about it. Um, I'm trying to think. Like, I will say that I don't think many people could travel the way that I travel. You know mm. how people get like hyper organized and need an. I can't do that because, like, like we were saying before, you know, I'm grateful for my mum. Um, through mum, I with international travel. Sometimes I travel. Uh, she she works for airlines, and so. Um, I, I was flying standby the whole time, so nothing was confirmed. And so, like, I, I flew from here to Sydney to catch a flight out of Sydney, and when I got to the thing at Sydney, it was meant to be a pretty sure thing, but sometimes they kick the standby people off for weight, you know, to take more cargo or more fuel or whatever. Uh, and so I got to the front, and they're like, really sorry, but it's not happening today. And I was like, oh, oh that's cool. <laughs> because <laughs> if I didn't if I didn't get on that flight, I wouldn't have made it. I wouldn't have got there in time. So the plan was if I didn't get there, turn around and go home. So it would have just been a spent, you know, close to $1,000 on going to Sydney and back for the day <laughs> and, and, and no other reason. Um, and so I was pretty bummed about that. I was like, I thought it was going to be a sure thing. So I sort of pled my case to the guy knowing that he couldn't really do much. Uh, but then they ended up taking one passenger which he told me, he's like, we're going to take one passenger, but you're like third in line in terms of priority. Uh, and so for some stroke of luck, the other two didn't decide to go. So I got on. Wow. Yeah. What are the chances? Which was really nice. Um, but then I, you know, rock up to America with nothing booked. So yeah. You, oh, yeah. You just figure it out on the spot. You know, yeah. sit in the That's airport. That's fun and, doing that. Yeah. So I, mm. I can live like that. Lots of people can't. And then the same thing happened. I wasn't sure if I was going to get on my flight to Columbus, which means I would have had to do some pretty hairy travel to get over there in time. Uh, and same thing coming home. <laughs> so that's that's always an interesting situation. People will ask me how I'm always so chill. It's like, because the situation's like that. Mm. <laughs> you know, when the whole thing can fall apart in your face and you've got no control over it, it can be scary sometimes. Mm. Well, why, you've just got me thinking, why has the Arnold not come back to Australia? Don't know. Uh, I, I don't know if it's because Tony Doherty didn't want to take it on again or the Arnold didn't want to come back mm. or I, I'm not 100% sure. Like I, I saw a fitness expo advertised the other day and I don't actually know where it is. Do you guys know anything about that? No, nah, but I've, because I've never gone to one, so I'd love to go to like a, a big Same. fitness expo or Arnold or. Yeah, I mean, it's cool. It's just lots of supplements and then weird stuff that don't really belong in the fitness industry, mm. like recruiting for the police and for <laughs> army and stuff like that. Legit, there's a lot of that sort of stuff. Mm. Uh, but like we used to do, there used to be a Brisbane fitness expo before mm. I opened PTC, like a few months before we, we had a, a thing there. Like that's that sign out the front. I originally designed to showcase there as like, we're coming to the Gold Coast and that became our front door sign. So that's like older than the gym. Uh, but that, that expo was shit. Mm. So wait, are there any big fitness expos in Australia currently? That's so no, weird. So there used to be the Sydney one and there used to be like PA powerlifting meets there. Yeah, so the, there was there used to be one called Phylex. Mm. Then there was Fitex. Then there was the Arnold's. And I can't remember who replaced who. Um, I know there's one on potentially this year. And I don't know where and what it is. I think it's in Melbourne. I don't know if it's replacing what the Arnold was, but I have no idea if it's coming back to Australia. I hope it does because it was cool. And if it does come back, I think it would be a good place to put something like the Zero Pro mm-hmm. if yeah. Pro Raw doesn't go back. Uh, so, yeah, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. Not sure. It's, yeah. The, the, the American Arnold is gigantic though. So it's yeah. Australian Arnold was just the convention center, whereas American Arnold has a lot of like off-site sports as well. Mm-hmm. Like it's a, it's a whole big thing. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. So cool. Yeah, it just bring it'll just like it would be so nostalgic seeing all the supplement brands and people that you you know might have idolized in your younger years getting into it. Like seeing Dennis Wolf, to me that's like that that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ronnie Connell was there as well. Didn't you see oh, wow. Kai Green? Yeah, Kai Green was in my hotel as well. Really? <laughs> yeah, I really and so 
I, again, I don't really care about getting photos with people and I want photos with people to be like, I got a photo with Kai Green, but it literally would have been, hey, can I get a photo with you? And then leave. Mm. And it doesn't feel authentic. Mm. Like when you get photos with famous people, unless you spend some time saying hello and stuff, I, I, don't, I don't know. I'm a bit funny about it. Should have got a grapefruit and then got a photo <laughs> with Kai Green. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, you girls can look that up if you don't know what I'm talking I about. I have no after. idea what yeah, you're talking about. Nah, never oh, okay, yeah, don't don't yeah. Google that. <laughs> no. Google it in incognito. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, so a lot of IFBB pros that weren't winning competitions, and it's still the case today that aren't winning competitions, they don't make much money. Mm. It's their like their full time job is training. These days it might be a bit different, but certainly back in like the magazine era before you could make money off social media and coaching and stuff like that. Um, a lot of a lot of professional bodybuilders did things like G for P, gay for pay, is what they called mm. it. Um, what? They were doing OnlyFans before OnlyFans. Yeah, yeah, so like posing in men's magazines. Oh, as in mm. like nude men's magazines or the Kai Green is What's a, that got is to a do video. With the grapefruit? No, like he had sex with a grapefruit. Was I figured in a magazine. that's where it was going. Yeah, that was no. Yeah. It was for a website. Mm. Like there were pr- s- s- subscription. Like yeah, dude. yeah. Subscription. How long ago websites. was this? Because that. For a while, was like trending on TikTok and it comes back every now and then. Yeah. Again. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't know why the Kai Green one is so famous. I think it's because he did really well in bodybuilding yeah. after that. But then you know, there's people like Sylvester Stallone that did the yeah. same, similar things, and like Batista. They uh, did. Did Batista? Yeah. Yeah. It's really. A, Sylvester Stallone was a porn star before mm. he was an actor. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah, no. dude. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there you go. All right, we got our states coming up. You can change your what did you learn this week. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we've got states coming up. Yeah, quick change. <laughs> Queensland states, when's that, two weeks away? Yeah, 23rd, 24th of March. Yeah, that'll yeah. be a very exciting competition. Mm. How many lifters, 160? Uh, one, we got about 140 at this stage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you have anyone competing? Kathy Grant's doing it. Mm-hmm. 20, did you say, oh, 23rd, 24th? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I've got uh, eight lifters doing it. You got eight. Nice. Eight. Yeah, yeah, I got two. Yes, yeah, so it's going to be good. Yeah. It's going to be a big comp. Yeah, they're all Very doing awesome. really well as well. Mm. It's a fun week because everyone's doing heavy singles this week. Yeah. Um, that's probably why I've been loving work so much lately as well. It's just mm. been a really cool vibe in here lately. Well, that's, a, that's why I'm trying to get down to see Vinny because uh, he's going to mm. squat something big today. Oh, nice. Which would be cool. Um, do most people do states... With the intention of qualifying for something else, or do some a lot of people do it to qualify for nationals? Not as like a that's the final comp type thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. like yeah. It's more of a, quali- a qualifying competition. But we do get no, all a few people doing it as their first comp. Yeah, as well. all our comps sell mm-hmm. out regardless. So it's mm-hmm. just like another big. I think people just love competing here. Yeah, mm-hmm. and people talk every chance they get. Yeah, well, you know, we run really good competitions, mm-hmm. and the standard of them is always really high. So yeah, so we got well the. Zero Cans has a um, APL comp. Their qualifier is on this weekend. So we'll be heading up there for that. When's that this weekend? Yeah, on yeah, Saturday. Nice. And then next weekend is I got to go to Sydney for an APL comp. And then on the Sunday is Pro Raw. Well, so Pro Raw is like oh. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or whatever. Uh, but I'll be going on the Sunday. Unfortunately, Tom Hardy busted his hamstring oh, the other he day. Did? Damn. Um, walking out of squad, he took a bit of a stumble and, and tore his hamstring. Not too bad. So he's, he's back moving again. He's relatively pain-free, uh, but we made the call not to proceed with Pro Raw. Just, I told him, look, even if your body feels 100%, your head is checked out, mm. and there'll be a fear factor going into it as well. Yeah. So it's it's just wiser not to do the comp. Uh, but we still have several lifters repping zero doing Pro Raw. So we've got uh, a woman, Jamie Canton, from New Zealand that Jordan Hellyer coaches. She'll be competing on the Saturday. Then on Sunday, we've got two boys from the UK that also – Jordan coaches, so Mason and Chris Pugh. Uh, and then we've got Joseph Whitaker, and it was going to be Tommy um, and Caden, but Tommy and Caden have decided not to do it. You got you got people competing at States, Coach? At States, yeah. I've got Shawnee and I have Matilda. Oh, nice. Yeah. Their training's been going good as well. Yeah, they've been doing really well. Shawnee will probably get on the gym board for every lift, which is cool. She will, yeah. Nice, um, nice, nice. I'll so just yeah, big, big few weekends of comps coming up. I'll just quickly uh, rattle off the names of who I've got competing. Got Vinny. Uh, he's doing really well. He's uh, got a whole lot stronger. Sammy, Morgan, Mark Carino, Josh Honky, Gardner, who's coming from oh, Fiji. Fiji. He's gotten so strong as well. He's already he's already blown his total out the, yeah, out the water. 
Um, got Drum Grumpy, Big Cooper Morgan, Alessandra Perry. She scored a 155 last night. Pretty easy too. Nice. And uh, Abraham Dierma. Oh, he, sorry. He's competing the week after in Canberra. Okay. Yeah, but, I was going to say because he's in yeah. orange, right? Yeah, yeah, but I just put him uh, in this chat so we can all talk. Uh, yeah, nice. Comp prep and things like that. Yeah, sweet. Um, yeah, so it's going to be good. It's going to be really cool. I, th- I reckon we save the topic for next week. Yeah, sounds mm-hmm. good. Mm. You got a quiz, Tom, bro? Oh, yes. My time to shine. Don't look at my phone. Let's go. <laughs> all right, are we going to do the thing where we say our name? Sure. <coughs> uh, wait, what was the topic? Didn't you say it was general? No, no, no. I mean the topic that we were going to do. I never actually read it. Okay, ready? Mm-hmm. Yes. How many films has Quentin Tarantino committed Bridget. to? Mm. Did someone just say no? I said no. You've got to say your name. I know. No, but Bridget went first. Do you want me to finish the Can question? Can you finish the question? Since has committed to before he retires. Ten. Correct. Fuck's sake. How many has he done already? Nine. Fuck's sake. Well done, James. <laughs> so you would have been wrong anyway. All right. Bridget won. What bird can fly backwards? There's only one. Bridget? Go. Pelican? Wrong. Mm-hmm. Can you give us a clue? No. What? <laughs> Bridget? An eagle? No. James? <laughs> yes. A Kia? No. Kit? What? Meg a parrot. No. The bird is very small. Meg a finch. No. Meg a hummingbird. Yes. Damn it. That's going to be my next. <laughs> okay. Bridget one, Meg one. Where, this is multiple choice. Where is the tallest mountain on earth? A, China slash Nepal. B, Australia. C, Hawaii. Or D, Kenya. James. Bridget. James went first. A. A, China slash Nepal? Yes, sir. No. Oh. <laughs> what? Meg, D. Kenya? No. James? Yes. B. Australia? No. Meg. James? <laughs> <laughs> Meg. C. C, Hawaii, yes. What's it called? Hawaii. So, this, this is where the, the disconnection is. The tallest summit on Earth is Mount Everest. Oh. The tallest mountain on Earth is in Hawaii. It's an inactive volcano where the majority majority of it is underwater. Oh. Wow. wow. So there you go. It's called Mauna Kea. That's wow. so cool. That is cool. All right. Who got that? Me. Meg. So Meg to <laughs> Bridget <default>. one. <laughs> Process of elimination. <laughs> all right. Chainsaws were originally invented for what purpose? Bridget. Wait, this is all mm. multiple choice. All right. But yeah, you, good. Go. Childbirth. Yes. <laughs> How'd you know that? There you go. That's fucked. Yuck. Yeah, mm-hmm. dude. Yeah, so the. Is multiple that why they're called C sections? <laughs> no. <laughs> that, that stands for. Chainsaw section. <laughs> Caesarean, like Mark Sorelli's. <laughs> Oh. All right. Yeah, it's messed up. Final question. Wait, what's the scores? Three and two. I've got two. Do I have two? Oh, you can hit them with the equalizer. Yeah, two, two. All right. Which zero lifter has the highest dots? Meg. Go. I don't know. I just that what? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, you, you forfeit that answer. Theo. No. Mm-hmm. Bridget. Yes. Jen Smith. No. James. Yes. Colton. Yes. Oh. Got a point. Mm. Engel- now you need to come Engel- up with Brecht. another one. Yeah, Colton has 626. Lily has 606. Jen has 604. Crazy. Mm. In the 600s. That's insane. Can you remember when 500 dots was like insane? That was Wilkes. Wilkes, sorry. Everyone sorry, wanted yeah. a 500 Wilkes. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need another question. Oh, a tiebreaker. Mm. Mm. So uh, you have to sit this one out. Mm-hmm. Okay, I got to think of one real quick. Um, 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 um. Do you? Uh, do, does it need? Oh, fuck. <laughs> it's so hard coming up with a question. Yeah, yeah on, off the top on, of your head, like this. On the spot is origin is, is a tough one. All right, this one's CJ themed because we're sitting in here. Barbers used to do more than just cut hair. What did they do? Bridget, go shave. That counts as cutting hair. Oh. <laughs> Just because she used the, the word shave. <laughs> right, Meg, this is your time to shine. Massage? No. CJ, give them some multiple choice answers. Um, uh, I 
I can give you clues. Do you guys know what the barber pole represents? What no. the colours on it mean? Okay. Let's say... Oh, pole dance. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, that's just me. Um, so the red is like blood, so I think medical. And blue is like first aid or something? I think so. S- surgery? Surgery? Yeah. Procedures? Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't seeing CJ for no surgical <laughs> procedure. <laughs> what kind of procedures? You should have cut the thing out my leg, bro. Oh, oh yeah, stuff like that. Oh, um, removing teeth. Whoa. Like, yeah, you used yeah. to go to a, a, a yeah, because barbers were the only ones that had those tools. Wow. Yeah, back wow. in the day. Yeah, there you go. That's cool. Nice work, Meg. Thanks. Congrats, well Meg. Yes. <laughs> General <right. laughs> knowledge. <laughs> well, I'm a scumbag and I didn't bring prizes like you do, so pri- pride is your prize. <laughs> oh, that's so All good. Right. Thanks for listening. All right. Bye. See you. Thank you so much for listening to the Zero Podcast. If you want more information, head to our Instagram, zero underscore weakness. Hit the link in the bio for all of our services and any information on upcoming workshops and events. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review so we can have a broader reach and answer more people's questions. Thank you once more. Thank you.